Wow, Electra are making a big splash here at Fully Charged Live North 2023. They brought a selection of big heavy trucks showing that waste disposal can go electric and all kinds of other uses too. But not forgetting the lovely little tuk-tuk that they've brought for a piece of fun. I though want to get to know why this is happening and what is going on under the skin of these vehicles. And to do that, I'm going to go and meet Ben Smith. MD of Electra Vehicles to understand more. Let's go and check it out. Ben, oh. thank you for inviting me here. This is really exciting. Absolutely, thank you very much for dropping by. Oh mate, listen, I, from the moment I've walked through the door here, it has been like, wow, this is all incredible. Tell me, so, Electra, a bit of a secret, right? You're not really that well known. I did what try and you tell do? you on the phone a number of times <laughs> to drop by. <laughs> and here I am and I'm so buzzing. Who are you and what do you do type thing? To sum it up, we're a truck manufacturer based in the UK. Yeah. Uh, we do it in a unique way. Well, not so unique, but unique because we started it off. Yeah. We're working with global OEMs and they supply us with a glider product. So trucks without engines, right. without diesel tanks, exhaust, yeah. with a warranty. So we're not just reverse engineering this. Everything you see here today, we've worked with the OEM yeah. the suppliers. They even come with our chassis numbers stamped into some of the trucks. Brilliant. So, that, so I suppose that means that when anything goes wrong with the actual base vehicle, that's all taken care of under their warranty and they're, you're protected by that. Absolutely. We, you know, a truck could turn up at an Aveco dealership. First of mm. all, they'll be saying, what on earth is this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and secondly, they can dive into their database and it'll pull up our engineering drawings Brilliant. and how to work on it. Okay. So what, what do you do then? So that you've got this glider chassis, what do you now do? So the glider chassis comes to us, which is a bit of a headache to move them, obviously getting yeah. them on a transporter, getting them off. Yeah. They come into our facility. We then electrify them in under two weeks, wow. uh, which is a fantastic thing. We've brought yeah. it down from around five weeks down to two weeks, and we're aiming for a, around a week turnaround Brilliant. in a couple of months. Fantastic. So why don't you just show me what's going on over here? Absolutely. We'll go and have a look. So Ben, what have we got here? So this is uh, one of our Generation 3 vehicles, a very special vehicle because this is the sister vehicle to uh, a very first off. We bought, we built six of these vehicles many years ago before yeah. I took over the business. Okay. Uh, and I've been dreaming of building them in our new guise and this is, this is what you see before your eyes. As if you can't miss it, yeah. in the luminous yellow. Yeah. Everything you see here in the luminous yellow and some of the black we've designed in-house uh, and implemented it onto an incredibly short wheelbase. Yeah. So this vehicle is, and its sister vehicle we're gonna go down and operate in Islington, Fine. which is the densest borough in the, in the city okay. for refuse collection, obviously. So very low mileage, very high EPTO use uh, and bin So that means lots and lots of diesel burnt, even though it's a Absolutely. short distance. Absolutely, I believe somewhere two to three miles per gallon a vehicle like this will be wow. doing. Okay, so for every time we electrify one of these, we're taking tons of carbon out of the, of the process, right? Absolutely. We've done a study on our old vehicles because we've already built lots of vehicles. Well, I was going to say Gen 3, Gen means there's Gen 1 and Gen 2, Gen right? Gen 1. There was a Gen 1 in 2018. Right. That evolved into Generation 2. Yeah. I believe there were 73 vehicles of the Generation 2. Right. And in the last year, as a very small business in this tiny facility, yeah. we've redesigned the whole platform right. using new batteries, which you can see here. We, yeah. We're working with the world's biggest battery manufacturer. Okay. That gives us an eight-year warranty, even longer if we want. Yeah. Uh, fantastic credentials. Yeah. Uh, and everything else we fitted in there, battery thermal management. So yeah. lithium doesn't charge in my, behind, below minus five. Right. Hot temperatures, plus 50, we yeah. can operate in those. DC fast charge, 150 kilowatt DC fast charge. Yeah. This specific vehicle will have V2L. So it's gonna go in and power the local markets in Islington. And I think we might just try and go and capture that because that is really exciting. So we that you're gonna power the whole market from two I don't of know these. the whole market. Oh, I don't okay. know how many market stalls there are. <laughs> But we can, certainly, we can certainly give out 400 volt three phase right. and we can charge other trucks. So you may have a fleet of vans that you yeah. know, need help in. So there's lots of different areas where I think V2L is going to get really exciting. It is. Gosh, you've got my brain working, <laughs> I'm, but I'm not going to go there. Stop it, Paul. <laughs> so Gen 1, Gen 2 has given you a lot of experience. You said you had done a study on how much energy has been saved or how many CO2 have been saved. So at the time, it was well over a year ago, it was yeah. something like 1.3 million EK, CKO2 kgs. Yeah. <laughs> That's a lot. Right? Whatever goes in the air, obviously <laughs> from diesel trucks. 
and you've saved uh, all and that, that was based on 50 trucks and now yeah. there's nearly 100 operators so the figure's way, way more of what we've already saved. Fantastic. Now, we've got what looks like something out of Doctor Who right <laughs> next to us. What is this? So the unique thing about Electra is we're doers. We right. don't just sit around and plan and plan. And maybe that's a, a bad thing. And I think it's a bloody fantastic thing because we've learned. We've learned what worked. And more importantly, we learned what didn't work. Yeah. Uh, and working on these trucks in the field uh, was a challenge. Yeah. Uh, and we said, why is it so hard to, yeah, to yeah. work on? Yeah. Why not make it as easy to work on? So, you know, we're selling trucks all over the world. Yeah. They need to be easy to maintain for the operators and yeah. for our point of view. Yeah, yeah. So this box, uh, which we're trying to keep under wraps, but I think uh, <laughs> people may, may well have seen it by now. <laughs> uh, you can't see inside it just yet, but in here is all the power electronics. So yeah. you've got uh, the compressor for the steering and brakes, yeah. uh, not the steering. The, uh, the compressors for the uh, suspension and brakes. You've got the steering. You've got our onboard charger. Right. So we've got an onboard 22 kilowatt charger. Okay. So a lot of places where we send these trucks to body or to operators, mm. they don't mm. have a charging infrastructure. So right. as long as they've got a 32 amp wall socket, yeah. they can charge the vehicle. That bit of kit also does the V2L. Right. Which is why we went uh, down okay. that route with yeah. that specific unit. Yeah. We've got a scalable motor controller in there. So we're simplifying the amount of components and where they're located. Yeah. And it's all in this little box. And also we even designed all the power distribution. So yeah. for safety, there's a lid and then we have a Perspex screen that has cutouts. So you can't just right. lean in and touch anything, yeah, even though yeah, you would yeah. have your level yeah. four IMEI training. But yeah. ultimately, if you see an issue these days, it's a fuse or a contactor. So we've made accessibility absolute utmost. Right. I'm OCD, you know, some people here <laughs> may not be happy, but I go around moaning at people about cables all looped up and yeah. heat shrink not being the right length. Yeah. But in all, the product looks fantastic. Yeah. But as a maintenance point of view, yeah. things like rat damage, we've not seen any yet, but if you need to change a cable, you can easily get in. We use all automotive grade connectors and you can change a cable dead easy. So, because you know, from my world in the commercial vehicle world, uptime is paramount. Yes. If the vehicle's not operational there are big issues going down sounds like you've really reduced the amount of time that you need to take to make replacements we've changes. drilled into that and also the uptake of mechanics wanting to work on these things people are t terrified of them they don't right. want to work on them so yeah. downtime's one thing making it easy to fix but also the technicians and that you know we we're ahead of the game on yeah. making them yeah uh, and we're ahead of the game on training people on how to work yeah. on them and why not make them easy to work on yeah so on that point, Ben, how easy is it to maintain one of these things? So we know typically these days, if it's an issue, like we mentioned, it's going to be a fuse or something like that. And that's from operating over a hundred of them, you know, mm. over the last few years. So firstly, safety, yeah. the biggest thing, accessibility. So you've got your positive side here and you've got your negative side here to get into there. Yeah. And then more importantly is all your components in the layout here. So you've got your your steering, your compressor, 24 volt batteries. We don't need yeah. huge batteries anymore with loads right. of amps because we've got a DC-DC running the 700 volt system down to okay. 24. Yeah. Our scalable motor controller, our onboard charger, and the DC-DC is hidden in there. And this box with the same components goes in every one of our trucks except for our seven and a half ton platform. So right. operators that are operating some 12 tons, some yeah. 16, some 18, some yeah. 27 tons, and even down to our hydrogen vehicles that we're building now, yeah. all have the same box, the same components, the same pipes, the same cables. So scalability and knowledge on how to work on them is going to go across yeah, the board yeah, yeah. for operators with these vehicles. With our modular approach, we can build the most challenging of chassis. So where I'm stood right now, we would normally have had to fit batteries. We've managed to fit nearly 300 kilowatts on a chassis with clear sides. In the waste industry, that's very exciting because no one can offer that. So Ben, here are some of the vehicles. Tell me about what we've got. So behind us here, we've got uh, our very first seven and a half ton uh, chassis. It's based on uh, an Isuzu glider. Okay. The exciting thing about this chassis is this is a 3.7 wheelbase, but we can go right down to a 3.30 wheelbase with a completely clear side and with 140 kilowatts of battery. And it's around weight polarity of the diesel, you know, there's not too much of a payload yeah. penalty on this chassis. So well, really exciting, really exciting for the food waste sector, as like the vehicles behind you there. Right, okay. So, um, and what's, what's exciting about those vehicles? 
So the government strategy is to collect everyone's food waste by 2024, 25. I yeah. don't know how they're going to go about doing it, but certainly there's going to be electric vehicles needed to do that. Yeah. So we develop around the waste industry. So all of our platforms are to tick off every one of the waste industries bodies, which is incredibly challenging. Yeah. If you wanted that vehicle to be a logistics vehicle or a fridge, that's easy. But designing that wheelbase with clear sides on yeah. our multiple platforms is challenging. So simply you're creating electric vehicles with specific ideas in mind and solving problems that the the industry is going to have as they try to electrify absolutely we're not starting with a product that can just be a box truck we're starting with the hardest possible product yeah and then going back to being a box truck is really easy so it yeah. may seem crazy but actually we've got the answer to everyone's problems yeah may not be mileage but this vehicle you can charge up to 80 percent in 35 40 minutes with 150 dc fast charge it's fantastic that's been an incredible insight into who electra are and what they've already done with their gen 1 and gen 2 vehicles these gen 3 vehicles are ready to take the market by storm taking trucks zero emission and giving us confidence for the future